So most people dream. A lot of people set goals. Everyone has habits, but almost no one has the system. And it's one thing to set goals, but it's another thing to keep the focus throughout the whole year. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna start from the top down. We're gonna chunk from your dream to your smart goals to the system, the habits strung together that are gonna get you there. So grab a coffee, get out your notebook, take some notes because there is a lot under this flip chart. So before we get started on setting this system, I wanna talk about goals. Now, like if you're a millennial, everybody's heard of SMART goals. This is like the common acronym. Everybody's heard about SMART goals. But there's a few issues with SMART goals and I really love goals. I'm a very goal-oriented person. But the issue with goals is that they're very incomplete. So one thing that can happen a lot of times is people will set a goal, it will be all of these things and still they won't reach it. And then it causes this shame and it starts this shame cycle. One of the biggest issues with SMART goals is this actionable, and time bound don't get tied together. They're seen as two distinct things. Is this an actionable thing? Yes. When do I want to get it done? By this time. And then we call that good. But these two things need to be married to each other because it's not enough just to be time bound and actionable separately. And a lot of times this is going to require you to be a good judge of time. When we set goals that are a year out or five years out, we become worse and worse judges of time as time goes out. And the biggest issue with smart goals is there's no system running this thing together, which is what I want to help you create in this video. You don't rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your systems, is what James Clear says. I feel that last year's ceiling, where we topped out, you know, where we just plateaued, we couldn't get higher than that point, last year's ceiling is this year's floor and this year's launch pad. So this is going to be the system that we're going to rise to and launch forward this year. So get out a piece of paper, grab your coffee, get a pen, be expectant. I'm going to make a system with you this year so that you can follow through, not continue that shame cycle. So this here, this mountain, we're going to call this the mountain of your goal. So at the top of this mountain, we have your SMART goal. That's where we want to be. That's the outcome that we want to achieve. But I believe that even above the SMART goal level, even above the top of this mountain, there's something that's also very important that a lot of people don't think about. And if you don't think about this step, when you get to the top of that mountain, you might not be happy. Or, you know, you might have that goal depression. You know, some people don't reach goals, but there are some people that do reach a lot of goals. And when they get there, they have this goal depression because it wasn't what they wanted in the first place. They built a system that created a result that they didn't want. And now that system's going to keep running. So above this SMART goal level, we have up here in the clouds, metaphorically, we have your dream, your dream life, your dream year, your dream weeks. This is airy fairy up in the clouds. These are the desires of your heart that people don't want to admit to themselves, but these are the things that cause midlife crises if they're not done. These are the things that you look back on your life with regrets because you didn't do it. It's the life changing work. It's the work that matters in your life. So it's important not to neglect this dream when we're getting to the SMART goals. Now at the very bottom of this mountain, there'll be some things stringing these together, but at the very bottom of this mountain, these are your habits. This is probably, you know, the most boring level of the system. You know, this is the, the slog, the step by step by step that's gonna get you up the mountain. Now, when you have a group of habits all strung together, done repeatedly in a way that works for you, that is your system which will propel you up this mountain. You know, so it's all of these things taken together that matter. And most people don't have the system. You know, you put, if you have the habits and you feel like you're putting in the work, but it's just not getting anywhere. You have these goals, you have these dreams, but you don't have the system. It's not gonna string throughout the year. There's not gonna be a thread attaching the beginning of the year to your June, your October, to the end of the year. So most people dream, a lot of people set goals. Everyone has habits, but almost no one has the system. And it's one thing to set goals, but it's another thing to keep the focus throughout the whole year. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna start from the top down. We're gonna chunk from your dream to your smart goals, to the system, the habits strung together that are gonna get you there. So if you haven't already, take out a piece of paper. We're gonna get to work now. So a lot of people, when they set goals, they think of the outcome that they want and they don't chunk backwards to get it. It's very important. You don't chunk forwards. You have to chunk backwards to figure out where do you want to be and slowly chunk backwards to get there. So we're going to start up at the life dream level right now. So this is the part where you connect with the desires of your heart. You dream big. You don't add anything. You don't edit anything out. If you, if there's a desire of your heart, your gut brings it up, your emotions bring it up. There's a nudge. There's a whisper, something you've been trying to kind of push away for a while. 
dump it on there. So I have this, I talked about this in my last Set Systems Not Goals video, but this is the Start Today journal that I don't believe they have in stock anymore, but there's a really great exercise at the very beginning that I want to read to you. So you can put on some nice music, put on a candle, visualize yourself 10 years from now. Imagine that a decade of time has gone by and you are living your best possible ideal for yourself in your life. Dream big, don't put any restriction on it. Don't overthink it. Just allow yourself to envision the most magnificent possible future version of yourself. A decade in the future. What is the very ver best version of yourself doing? What do you look like? How do you go about your day? How do you speak to the people you love? How are you loved in return? What kind of clothes do you wear? What kind of car do you drive? Are you a great cook? Do you love to read? Do you love to run? Get as specific as you possibly can. Where do you go on vacation? What's your favorite restaurant to eat at now that your life is different? What kind of food do you consume? What does it feel like to go throughout your day? Are you optimistic? Are you encouraging to others? After a decade of working on yourself and growing as a person, how much joy is there in your life? Who's in your life? What's your week like? How do you treat people? How do they treat you? Let your dreams run absolutely wild. Are you happy? Are you energetic? Are you driven? Do you feel ambitious? What's your relationship like with your family members? Do you own a home? What does it look like? Do you have kids? Do you have a family? Are you married? What's the best of the best? Now go even bigger. What's a bigger version of the best version of you living every day in the best state that you know how to be? What do you do for work? What is the highest value that your future self holds? Is it family? Is it loyalty? Is it growth? Be as specific as you can. See it like a movie in your mind. Without a second of judgment or overthinking it, I want you to write down everything that you just thought of as fast as you can. I don't want you to forget any of it. I want the future version of yourself to be seared into your brain. So I also have this emotions list that I will link in the description box, all these desired feelings list. And I chose this specific list because it has very interesting feelings like there are you know the typical feelings like I want to feel joyful or expansive or alive but then there's also you know things that aren't typically considered feeling words like a, I would have like a mermaid like life or a lioness life or a hot life you know it's all these different kind of unique words so click on that and figure out what feelings do I want what things would be true and write those things down so when you look at that dream life and everything that's happened I want you to write down the top 10 most important that you want to have happen in the next decade. And I've heard the quote that we overestimate what we can do in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in 10. And so I want you to dream big. What things would be true about your life? What are the top 10 biggest priorities that you have? So, you know, maybe you're thinking if that would be true, maybe I would be a best-selling author. And so I want you to list the top 10 most important to you, not what you feel like should be on the list, because it's very important to personalize it. And when you write it, I want you to write it in the past tense. I am a best-selling author. If you write it like I will be a best-selling author, your brain sees it as a to-do item and then it feels kind of like, I got this to-do item thing I gotta do. But when you write it in the past tense, like I am a best-selling author, that feels a little lighter. That's like, wow, I'm a best-selling author. It creates expectancy. And like I said, so much of goal setting is related to the emotions. You don't wanna leave emotions behind. You wanna bring them into the goal setting process. So after you've written these things, like in the past tense, present tense, I am a best-selling author, you're gonna go ahead and circle which is the one that you wanna focus on this year? Which one do you wanna go after first? You don't wanna scatter you know, your efforts in many different directions. You wanna, this is a prioritization exercise and figuring out what do I really want to do? And it takes all the stress out of all those other things, but you just hone in. What is the one thing that I want to make happen? So we're gonna look at that one goal that you want to pursue, that one dream, that big dream that's so important in your life. And we're all gonna look a quarter out. You know, you can generally think about, okay, so where do I wanna be? at the end of this year. Okay, so think about where do you wanna be at the end of this year. And we're not gonna make super specifics for quarter three, quarter two, but for quarter one, where do you wanna be realistically? Like if you wanna have a book written by the end of this year, maybe by the end of quarter one, you wanna have a rough draft done. So I used to use Rachel Hollis's Start Today planners, but they're out of stock. So I made my own actually. So this is what I use. So this is all the whole purpose of this entire book is to chunk backwards, set these quarterly goals, these quarterly sprints, you know, monthly projects, things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chunk backwards. So if at the end of quarter one, you wanna have a rough draft done, we're gonna chunk backwards to where do you wanna be at the end of month one, where do you wanna be at the end of month two, and where do you wanna be at the end of month three, which is the end of quarter one. So if you wanna have, let's say, the rough draft done by the end of quarter one, maybe at the end of month two, you want to have half the rough draft done. So these are the outcomes that you want to see. So maybe by the end of month one, you say, I want to have 
three chapters written. Maybe you could keep chunking back. Maybe you want the book to be 12 chapters total, so six would be half, three would be a quarter of that. Now these are the benchmarks that you want to hit, and these are called outcome goals. These are the outcomes you want to see. These are not verbs, these are like nouns of things that you want to have. Sometimes these things can be a little bit beyond your control. Like if you want to weigh a certain amount, or if you want to have a certain amount of subscribers, you can certainly put in actions and do verbs to do that thing, but there's not a one-to-one, -one, I do this, therefore this. So there is, you have con some control over it, but not as much control over it. So as we're still at this level, you have less control over things, but we're going to continue chunking the system. We're not to the system yet, just so you know, we're still on goal level. But once we get to the system, it's going to get more and more verb and action oriented. So you say at the end of month one, January, at the end of January, I want to have three chapters written. Now we're going to chunk that backwards even further, a little lower to the weekly level. So by the end of week four, so the end of the month, I want to have three chapters written. By the end of week three, by the end of week two, by the end of week one, Maybe at the end of week three, you want to have two chapters written. Maybe by the end of week two, you want to have one chapter written. And maybe by the end of week one, you want to just have an outline done. So all of a sudden it gets smaller and smaller and you can see, okay, this is getting smaller. You know, it's getting a little bit more actionable about the things we're going to do at the weekly level. But once we get down to the daily level, I'm telling you, it's going to clear this up so well. Okay, so now we're getting into the daily habit. This is finally where we're getting into the system. I call this the dream management system. Everybody needs a dream management system. And it's these string of habits strung together that will get you throughout the entire year. You have to attach things to time. Time is what reality is. We live in reality. So if we just say, I wanna weigh this much by the end of the year, but you don't ever attach it to, on Monday I'm gonna do this, on Tuesday I'll do this, on Wednesday I'll do this. You know, it just stays detached from time and therefore it stays detached from reality. And that's what causes the dreams to not become reality. That's what causes these dreams to die. So once you get down to the weekly level, you know, maybe by the end of week one, we said we wanted to write an outline. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll adjust that just for the sake of this example. Let's say by the end of week one, you wanted to write one chapter, let's say. So Rachel Hollis calls this the five to strive. And so it comes from kind of like the 2080 principle that 20% of your time gives 80% of the results. So you don't need to spend all of your time on this goal. You don't need to like completely, you know, derail your life for this thing. Just one hour a day, five hours a week, five hours a week to strive up that mountain, to go up that mountain. Where can you find five hours? You know, when I was still a teacher, I would wake up at five, I would go to a coffee shop at six in the morning from six to seven, I'd be at the coffee shop, then I would go teach. And when I got off work from teaching, then my day was just done and I could relax. Now you don't have to do something like that, but that's something that was really helpful for me. The first time I did this video, I made the slip chart at the coffee shop the first time I did the first iteration of this video. So when you chunk back, now we have the daily outcomes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if I want to have one chapter written by the end of the week, you know, maybe on Monday I outline that one chapter. Maybe on Tuesday I draft half. Maybe on Wednesday I draft another half. Maybe Thursday I edit and Friday I edit. And in this planner, you show up to weekly planning, it has a weekly planning ritual for chunking these things out. And so it makes it so easy to be intentional when all you have to do is find the one habit that will get this thing done. So every morning, the one habit that I'm implementing is I'm showing up to the planner. It has me pick, you know, for the, for the weekly planning, it has you pick what three things would make this week intentional. It has this chunking process where on the weekly spread, we already figured out what are our outcomes for the end of each week and kind of listing those action steps in the brain dump bubbles. And then when you get to the weekly spread, there's just check boxes, you know, add these things to the calendar. In addition to that, on the daily level, I love Rachel Hollis's Start Today journal. It has you list in the morning five things you're grateful for, these 10 dreams that we outlined in the past tense, it says in the past tense, 10 dreams I made happen, and then the one goal I'm gonna focus on first. So it's the connection point, you know, at the bottom of the mountain, those habits, and the dream life at the top, and every day you're focusing on that goal. You know, it's easy once you get to June to start you know, forgetting, what am I doing this for? But the system of having these two things really just focuses me. And this system, every time I do it, I get results. Every time I stray away from it, I lack results. And so I'm just committing to this one habit. I don't have to overcomplicate it. I just commit to this one habit to showing up to the dream management system. All these habits strung together and you have these outcomes and you attach them to time. That's when your goals become reality. Time is reality. So when you chunk them down to verbs and actions that you're gonna do attached to time on the calendar, you commit to showing up to the calendar, then everything just falls into place. You do the initial yearly dreaming work the planner does the rest, all you do is show up. So I think it's so powerful. I think this is some of the most meaningful work that we can do, some of the most important work that we can do. Um, I love the quote from Brene Brown, 
find what lights you up and do more of that thing because the world needs more people who are lit up. So it's not selfish work that you're doing to have a life that you love and do what you love. This is life changing work. And I don't say that lightly. I don't say it to just like fluff people up, but I really think that when you do what lights you up, it really creates positive change to the world. So doing the work, showing up to doing the work, it's so important. I'm, I'm so excited about this intentional planner. If you wanna buy this intentional planner, I will have the link in the description. I think that this is no longer in stock, but you can just do this in a journal, these questions every day, if that's something that you wanna implement in your morning routine. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support you showed on the last one. I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.